author of the book that we are focused on today as a key part of this. If you haven't picked up a copy in person, please do. If you haven't gotten a copy online, please do. Um, we got to see a preview of David's presentation, and I'm telling you, this is something I'm pretty excited about. This is, um, uh, you'll just wait to see. And so uh, today what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about uh, how technologies are converging and disrupting and transforming the sports industry, okay? So I will start by talking about the convergence of digital twins and IoT. Uh, if you don't know what a digital twin is, digital twins are basically digital replicas of a physical object. And I think the best way to illustrate that is to actually give you a real world sample of how a sports organization has used a digital twin to uh, renovate their stadium So Bob Iger is the current chairman of Disney. Back then, he was the CEO. He wrote this book called The Ride of a Lifetime. It's a great book. If you haven't read it, I would highly encourage you to read the book. But basically, Bob had to make a very difficult decision. Um, at the time, uh, they were running all of their content on third-party platforms. A lot of it was on Netflix. And Bob had to make the decision to take all of their content away from Netflix and into their own platform. It was a risky decision, it was a difficult decision because for you know, a short period of time they're actually gonna lose money and they actually lost money. But he realized that in order for him to ride that exponential curve, he would really need to, to do this. And so he went to the board, asked permission to create his own platform, and after the board approved, here's what Bob had to say. He said, uh, we were now fully committed to also becoming a distributor of our own content straight to consumers without intermediaries. In essence, we are now hastening the disruption of our own business. So he was cannibalizing a current business to create the possibility of exponential growth. Now the sports organization are realizing that they can have additional sources of revenue by having their own streaming channels. They can do this directly to the consumer. They can go directly to their fans and they don't need intermediaries anymore. And what that really means is that now they own the customer. They, they know who they are, they can get information to increase engagement and uh, increase revenue. And last but not least, this has built-in intelligence. And this is all part of you know, gathering data, getting to know your customer, uh, understanding what they like, understanding what they watch, understanding what they click on, all of this information is being gathered and built so that you can engage your customer and obviously do marketing uh, targeted to that audience. Now, let's step it up a notch. Now we have streaming. Let's add augmented reality to that streaming uh, capability. And uh, the best way to illustrate this is to show you a video. This is just a demonstration of what can be done with augmented reality. So watch this. That something? <laughs> and then there are other applications to this technology as well. So in this case, it's a hockey game, 
And uh, it's the same game being broadcast to four different audiences. And what you're going to see here, just notice the ads on the uh, edge of, of the rink. I'm going to play this for a few seconds. You, you see the game playing, but the ads are going to be unique for each particular audience. <laughs> So that's another you know, application for, for that technology. So with that, I'd like to transition to another convergence. And now I'm going to talk about AI, and I'm going to talk about blockchain and how these technologies are converging. So again, when I talk about AI, I'm talking about the broader context of data analytics. And where that's really helpful uh, is in the area of fan engagement. And it goes back to really getting to know your customer, getting to know your fan, engaging that fan. And now let's introduce blockchain. How many of you know what blockchain is? Just a show of hands. OK, about half of the audience here. So um, I'm going to give you a one minute lecture on blockchain just to, to level the, the playing field here so that uh, we all know what we're talking about. So blockchain is basically a data structure. It's, a, it's an easy way to think of it. But it has some very specific characteristics that are very, very important. The first one is that this is distributed technology. So the information is distributed across the globe on many, many different servers. It's a completely decentralized system. So there is no single person that owns it. There is no single company that owns it. There is no single government that has jurisdiction over this data. It's spread all over the world. Second, it's immutable. You can't change it. Once you put something in the blockchain, it's there forever. Okay, so we have um, a, a, a great way to make sure that the information is not being, being changed, that people are not messing around with the data. It's permissionless. So what that means is anyone can write to the blockchain. Now notice that there is a star next to permissionless, and the reason for that is that there are some private blockchain configurations where you require authentication, but for the purposes of the discussion today, uh, think of blockchain as being a permissionless system. And it's completely transparent. What that means is anyone can go into the blockchain and can see all the transactions that happened within that blockchain. Anyone can do it. And, and the beauty of that is it's a completely decentralized system where anyone can go in there and verify that the data is accurate, that the transactions are good, that there is nobody you know, taking money from one bucket and putting in another without visibility. So this is complete transparency. And where blockchain is being applied to real world uh, applications is in, in many different areas. And I'm going to talk about one of them, which is NFTs, or non-fungible tokens. So a non-fungible token is a token that resides on the blockchain that has a unique value. It's different than a coin. You know, if you think of a Bitcoin, for instance, a Bitcoin has the same value. Um, it's one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin no matter where you are. Uh, NFTs are different. Every single NFT has a very unique value. And where it's being applied in sports is uh, with the concept of fan tokens that I will explain in a minute, fantasy games, smart tickets, and collectibles. Okay, so let's talk about each one of these. I'll start with fan tokens. So this is really going wild in Europe right now, in the world of uh, soccer and, and football, as they call it, in Europe. Uh, so what a fan token does is it gives you the ability to purchase this token and then give you a vote on any initiative that that particular sports entity wants to allow you to vote on. So let's say they're going to design a new jersey for the team. They have a few different designs, and they want you to vote on the winning um, design for that jersey. You can do that through fan tokens. And you know the imagination here is the limit, right? So the, the clubs are doing all kinds of interesting things with this technology. Then you have the fantasy games. So there's a company in uh, France called So Rare. And what they do is they allow you to buy these uh, cards of the players. And uh, what you do is you build your own team, and then they are able to match real-world performance data to uh, these tokens. And uh, depending on the performance of these players, you, know, you get rewards. So you're building your own team, and you're getting rewarded depending on the real-world performance of these players. So we're bringing the physical world into the digital world. 
The next one is intelligent tickets. And this is a really powerful uh, application of this technology. Uh, tickets are worth uh, $73 billion worldwide. In the world of sports, it represents about $25 billion. But the problem with tickets is that uh, there's a secondary market, and that secondary market is not in control of the sports organization. So you see a lot of scalping, you see a lot of fraud, um, and through this technology, you can eliminate all of those problems. And you can give the sports organization complete control of not only the primary sales, but the secondary sales as well. And then we get into one of my favorite things, which is collectible NFTs. So just to give you a sense for how crazy this market is going, in uh, the first half of 2021, there were $10 billion in uh, transactions for collectible NFTs. So if you don't know what NFT collectible is, I'll give you a, an example. So this is probably one of the most famous examples right now in the world of sports. Um, there is a video, it's a digital video, about five seconds, of uh, LeBron James uh, dunking a, a basket and was put on auction. Uh, and through that auction, they received uh, bids of anywhere from $29,000 to $99,000 on the primary sale. And then where it gets really crazy is on the secondary market, this is being sold for $1 million. So it's $1 million for a five second video. And you're gonna ask, well, wh why would I wanna do that? Why would I pay a you know, million dollars for a five second video if I can just go to the internet and copy that video? The point is, this is a authenticated video uh, that's unique, that um, you can own yourself, and it's, it's like any other collectible. The value is in the authenticity of that particular NFT. So if you think this is crazy, wait, there's more. I'm gonna show you real crazy right now, okay? These monkey avatars are selling on auction a set of these, these avatars for $24.4 million. I'm not kidding, this is, this is real. This is happening right now. And that results in a mutant ape avatar. And with that mutant ape avatar, they were able to sell $96 million. $96 million for ape avatars. And then the thing just went crazy. Everybody is, is now in the monkey business. Uh, we got this one that's uh, running on a different blockchain called Solana. It's, they call it a degenerate ape, and it's selling for millions and millions of dollars. Crazy? We think it's crazy, but it's also sort of fun, right? So we wanted to get in on this fun, and we thought, well, maybe we should create our own little ape avatar. Maybe we'll sell it for millions of dollars. How about that? Uh, so we did, and we came up with the Contacts Conference NFT in the form of a monkey, but if you zoom in, you'll see it's the Contacts Conference, and it's available right now for you to bid on if you want to be the proud owner. There's only one in the world. It's the only one that's authentic. You can't get it anyplace else. Uh, 